Hey, Steve Soretsky here. I uh, wanted to put together basically a little, a little story. I always like to provide some sort of feet on the ground perspectives. Um, obviously, a lot of it is what I put out is sort of analytical and data driven, but I think sometimes it's important to. I'm always looking at sort of the mentality that's out there in the market. You know, what are people saying at, at open houses, listings, online and the internet, etc., and sort of understanding the mentality that's in the Vancouver real estate market. Um, got a phone call from a good friend of mine, um, you know, that had invested in, in a pre-sale condo, I think back in 2014, and is obviously is now living in it, of course, it was purchased as a primary residence, but it was a, it was a first time buyer buying in a pre-sale and leveraging that sort of deposit structure at 5%, 5%, 5%. 15% worth of deposits, gives you a couple of years to save up before we have to pay. Um, you know, and so he bought this in 2014 and that has obviously done extremely well um, it, when the, in the massive uh, price acceleration that we've seen over the last couple of years. So, you know, pre-sales have been a very lucrative, uh, very lucrative way to get into the market, uh, especially for a lot of young first time buyers. Um, that are able again that are able to get into the market basically leveraging these deposits into a rising market but a lot of that has changed so again I've talked about numerous pre-sales of course a lot of the foreigners like them uh, and the ability, the ability to sort of buy them and then assign them flip them at a higher cost uh, so basically anyways this guy calls me and he says you know hey Steve like you know I did really well on my first pre-sale and uh, you know I'm extremely happy I just got in when I got in uh, look, I got some money sitting here. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. I want to invest it. Uh, I'm thinking about um, investing in a, in a pre-sale. I want to buy a pre-sale and I want to flip it. I'm not going to live in it. I want to buy a pre-sale and I want to flip it for a profit when it comes to complete. Um, and so that that was what the request was, and it was basically you know, you know he's asking what I should do on this. So there's a couple things here. So basically, what I told him was. First of all, the, the window on pre-sales is extremely small or non-existent. Basically, what the developers have done is they, they price in future appreciation into their prices. And so if you buy in at today's current price, and they're saying, okay, in three years, once this building is complete, we think this is, this is what it's going to be worth. So we're charging you X amount today. And so there's really there's no incentive to buy a pre-sale today. Normally, in a more balanced market, they they put they price them basically along par with what you'd buy a resale market. Sometimes they give you further incentives, etc. But in today's market, when the inventory is so tight, when the market is so hot, when prices have gone up fifty percent in two years, you know, on average, these guys are getting away with whatever they can get away with, and they are charging people an arm and a leg. And so basically, I just told them, you know, hey, listen, man, like. As much as I would love to pick up, you know, a fat, juicy commission check off you, I just don't think there's any window there for you to do it. Um, I think there's a lot of risk involved, and I basically just told him the pros and the cons. I said, "Hey, listen, at the end of the day, you can make your own decision. Uh, here's the pros, here's the cons of what I see in the pre-sale market, and then uh, you know, you make your decision." Because I'm not an investment advisor. All I can simply tell you is what I'm seeing in the market. Here's what I know. Now you have to go and make your decision. I can't make it for you. And that's a message I want to reiterate to everybody that watches all my content, etc. It's never ever telling anyone to do it with. But you have to look at this now from a numbers perspective. Okay, so in these pre-sales today, based on what they're charging, let's say I'll give you again, we've talked about this, the Joyce Tower. If they're asking today for $1,500 a square foot, and when you can go and literally buy it right next door in a building that literally just completed about a month ago for a thousand dollars a square foot you have a five hundred dollar discrepancy so when, the, when that building completes in three years in order just for it to hit resale value when you go to complete and cash out that in order for that to be worth fifteen hundred a foot prices have to increase fifteen percent each year fifteen 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 so you're asking for forty five percent increase Buying it at fifteen hundred a foot today at a pre-sale in that Joyce area. I'm gonna give other examples, but buying it at fifteen hundred a foot there, and then trying to resell it in three years upon completion at a profit, at minimum just to break even, you're gonna to have to basically have the 
increase by 15% each and every year based on today's current prices, what you can buy, a brand new building for that just completed. So will, I mean, that's, to me, that's, to me, that's a gamble. Asking prices to appreciate in order for this to be a lucrative winning scenario for you because you're not going to go and live in it as strictly as an investment. You're strictly speculating it. You don't plan to rent it out. Um, again, a lot of these prices, even if you're renting it out at 20% down, it's going to be a negative cash flow for you. So unless you can sort of weather that storm, now you're looking at a 15%. Prices have to basically increase by 45% over the next three years in order for you to break even on that property if you're speculating on it. Um, so again, uh, you know, sure, maybe prices uh, increase 45%. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say they won't, but I think it's extremely unlikely. I think that you'll probably have riots on the street before you hit a 45% increase in the next three years. Um, you know, that puts like a, you know, a, a studio apartment in the Joyce area at $750,000 with no parking. Uh, what, where, where is that threshold? I mean, sure you can keep funneling in foreign money, but at the end of the day, uh, even if foreign money is say, right now the data says 10%, even if it's 25% of the market, you still have 75% of the people that are local earning local salaries here uh, that simply cannot afford uh, $750,000 for a studio apartment. So, um, and of course, obviously, based on everything that's in the market right now, you have more and more governments. You have a brand new BC government coming in, which I would say is more a result of people being upset with the status quo a lot of this housing policy has sort of come to a rift and that is part of the reason why you've seen this political change uh you have the bank of canada now increasing interest rates who knows how far they're going to get don't think it's going to be far um you have credit uh, canada's credit binge which is right up here in the top of the world uh, that is, is getting all sorts of eyeballs, not only from uh, local governments, but uh, you know the IMF, um, every single economist. Like there, there's there is so many things playing against it. Where when you're asking prices, when you're making an investment and banking on it just to break even to increase forty five percent. There's no window there for you. So again, as much as I would love to do a sale to uh, you know, pick up a nice commission check from you, I just had to tell them, you know, listen, this is what it's at. You run the risk. Unless you're going to increase, you know, X amount of dollars, you could be left holding the bag. And so, and again, I just like another thing, you know, if there is a, a correction in the market, um, that the, these risks in pre-sales, you have a lot of people that start to walk away from deposits. Buildings have a tough time getting funding. Um, you know, you've certainly seen in other areas of the world where they've had real estate busts. These projects just boom, they get left empty. Um, they don't, they don't complete construction. Uh, again, I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but you always have to outweigh the pros and the cons. There should be incentive for you buying a project that doesn't complete for three years. Um, and so as of right now, there's not, and they're charging too much money for it personally to make financial sense, unless you plan to hold this for minimum you know, eight to 10 years, uh, I just don't see how you can buy it and try to speculate and cash out in three years and make a profit. I just don't think based on today's prices that that's going to be there. And again, maybe they do increase 45%. Uh, I can give you other examples. Uh, Surrey's Concord Pacific uh, in, in Wally. I think they're starting at 750 a foot. I think they're averaging about 800 a foot as a pre-sale. You know, you can buy into a one-year-old building across the street for six hundred dollars a foot. Um, so you have you buy in today at six hundred a foot, or you're basically asking our prices in in, in the Wally area going to be eight hundred a foot in three years. They very very well could be, but that is a, you're asking a lot when prices have already increased by about you know thirty percent this year. Uh, 50% over the last two years, asking them to continue increasing at a torrid pace, uh, I just think is unrealistic, and maybe it's possible. The average for Vancouver, I'm talking Vancouver specifically, over the last, I believe it's 30 years, on average, condo prices have increased by about 5% per year. 
that is not adjusted for inflation. So 5% per year. So with prices increasing about 30%, you know, 20% over the last couple of years, you can tell that this is not normal growth and these no asset goes in a straight line. So I just think that at this current time, uh, that's again why I'm swaying people from pre-sales. Uh, you can go into New West. Again, they're charging about 800 a foot. You can buy in brand new or a one-year-old building, about 650 a foot right now, maybe 700 a foot. And then New West pre-sales, you're looking at 800 to about 850 a foot. So you have to do the math. So now they're, they're basically asking you anywhere between about a 10% increase each year to about 10 to 15% each year over the next a number of years so um, for those looking to speculate on Vancouver pre-sales I just don't think that the margin is there I don't think there's enough incentives I think that uh, you're taking a lot of risk so unless you're planning to hold for the long term or to live in it um, I think that you're speculating and trying to buy and then flip which again a lot of these foreign investors are doing at the moment I just don't think there's a market there for them I think maybe they don't care because it's just a way to get money out of out of China or wherever there's no window there for you uh i don't think to make money but again maybe there is and if you think the window's there if you think that prices are going to increase by 10 to 15 percent each year for the next three years then go for it and then you'll break even but if you actually want to make money you know now you're hoping for what i don't know an 18 percent increase each year um if that does happen Congrats. I think that's, you know, I mean, good for you. I think, uh, you know, brass balls. But I like where, like, I just think the, the amount of political upheaval, the, the amount of people that you would have, I mean, if you think it's bad now with, you know, people being up talking every day, it's about housing affordability. Government's coming in, we're getting you know new elected based on these crazy housing platforms. Look at what they've brought in uh, a vacant empty homes tax, a 15% foreign buyers tax. They've ended shadow flipping. Um, now they're proposing a 2% speculators tax on people that don't live and the people that don't pay income tax here. Um, so if prices increase another 45% in three years, what, how many more policies do you think they're going to implement? Uh, there's the Greens have been talking like one of their housing platforms was t was taxing your principal residence. Uh, this is just going to be they're just going to keep coming at it and coming at it and coming at it. And so if you think that you know again maybe governments let it go, but if the, I just don't see how they're going to let it increase another forty five percent in the next three years, I just think that uh, the amount of political the public upheaval from that will be just astronomical and I don't think that uh, it will be allowed to happen but you know who knows crazier things have happened um, and that's sort of where I'm coming from and uh, you know maybe some people in the industry or whatever oh you just you know you're throwing away, just throwing away a sale dissuading people no I just laid out the pros and the cons and I said hey listen you know, I just said hey you can you can leverage the deposits um, you know you can take a chance can invest your money and uh, you know maybe it will work out but here's the cons and uh, for me personally I think the cons outweigh the pros but that's a decision that you all have to make and again I state this because the amount of inquiries I get on a monthly basis for people asking about pre-sales and how to get into them um, you know it's mounting and I think this is a common question people think that like the pre-sales are some sort of like great bargain they're, they're not a bargain today but again if you're planning to buy in it and you want brand new and you want to live in there for the next 10 years like great go for it I'm not going to sway you by any means but if you're planning to speculate and, and buy it and, and flip the contract uh, in a couple of years or you know close on it and then resell it at a profit I just I just don't think the margin's there. So anyways, that's my uh, rant for today. I'd love to hear your comments in the description below. Uh, Pre-sales, bargain. Do you think prices are going to go up by 45% in the next three years? Would love to hear your thoughts.